All right, so I put a sweatshirt on because I was cold in recording these videos. But now, now we're going to go from uh, we are going to go from the the formulas to the names. So today it's pretty straightforward. It's actually it's it's not bad. You'll be fine doing this. Um, the basic goal, the basic idea is that you are going to be so here we'll, we'll call it uh, naming. Ionic formula. Remember, we're going, you know, ionic is metal to non metal bonds, uh, it's a transfer of electrons. Very important that we never forget that. So far, and, and let's just be clear on stuff. So far, I have given you a name of an ionic formula. This is the name basic salt, not table salt, sodium chloride, and you have converted it to a formula. That's how we've done it so far. Now, today, we're going to go the other way. I'm going to give you a formula. You're going to write the name. All right. That's that's what we're going to do now. Thankfully, we're, we're keeping this part simple, though, in this class. Um, there, there's a little more to it than what I'm going to show you right now in that you would have to sometimes write Roman numerals if you have transition metals in the names. But we're just not doing that part because just for the sake of, you know, keeping things simple, we're just not doing that. All right, you might want to reference this potentially today, just in case you see something you don't understand. But really, and this is more just, I mean, you know, you'll need to reference it for names, basically, and the periodic table, again, of course, for, you know, names. It's just, yeah. So I'm just planning on doing some examples here, explaining everything, and then that'll be that. And then you can get your work done. I'll keep this as concise as possible. So let's say that we were going to do a uh, really simple example. Let's say that I gave you a formula, say CaBr2. All right. All you do to, to get this done, all you do to, to write the, the, the name of this, it's as simple as it seems. All right. You're just simply going to write, so you're just going to write the first element. It's calcium. So just write the name of the first element. All right. Then, so you can write well, no. Right name of first, or we'll say the first thing, because it's not always going to be just an element. It might be a polyatomic ion. It might be ammonium. So really, you'd say write the name of the first of the cation, because that's the positive ion. But that's not a term we've been using in the last one. I'm not specifically saying that. So write the name of the first thing. So just write calcium. Done. Simple. Doesn't matter however many you have. You do not indicate subscripts. All right. So. Um, I know, I'll, I'll get that in a minute. Then, write the name of second thing, of second element or compound. The thing is, though, so this is a deal with this a little bit. So, you're going to change. If it's an element, if it's an element, you're going to change the ending. Change the ending to I, D, E. If it's a polyatomic ion, it's a polyatomic ion, leave it alone. So what do I mean by that? Well, we've got Br2. So we've got bromine. Bromine is not a polyatomic ion. It's not, no, it's not more than one. It's right here. It's just a single element. So it's, it's bromide. So you're going to change the ending from bromine to bromide. That's where the IDE comes in. Now, the most common mistake made on this, the only mistake made on this, usually, is you see a two there, and you're like, well, what about the two? I got to write the two. No. For ionic compounds, number one, no prefix ever. No prefix. This looks like a serial killer four-year-old wrote that. Whatever. I was trying to fit it in. No prefix. No prefixes. 
So just because you see a two there, you're going to want to write calcium dibromide. You're going to want to put dibromide in there because that's like what you think of with the covalent stuff. You do not do that ever with ionic compounds. So in ionic compounds, no prefixes. It's as simple as write the name, change the ending, done. That's it. Nothing more to it. All right. Uh, another example. Let's do just a few more examples. And we will call it good. So example next, as I like to call it. So Na2SO4. So you got to look up. Here's example. Sodium. So Na is sodium. So you're just going to write sodium. Now SO4, you're like, oh, I don't know what that is. Well, sulfate. SO4 is sulfate. All right. So you're just going to write sulfate. Just SO4, sulfate. Is it? Oh, that was rocket science. That's it. They're done with the problem. Congratulations. Next. You know. Don't think, don't think too hard about it. Don't make it too complicated for yourself. I mean, that's all you think. You don't worry about writing these numbers. The numbers never mean anything for you for ionic compound naming. You just write the names. You don't need the prefixes. So it's not disodium. It's not tetra. No, no, no. It's just sodium sulfate. Done. Simple. All right. And I mean, that's all there is to it. The only other thing I could possibly think of that could confuse you would be if you had like a parenthesis involved with something. So if you had like a... Uh, Something like that. No, so you're just going to look these up again. Al, that's aluminum. And then OH. Your OH is hydroxide. It's just the negative one charge, so it's just OH. But again, we don't care about that. We just care. It's hydroxide. So we're just going to write aluminum hydroxide. Done. That's all you got to do. You don't indicate that three, the parentheses don't matter at all. The reason we don't need prefixes is that we should be able to take this information and write that formula correctly. That's the point of it. All right. So that's the deal. Um, you know, your work is just pretty much to get this worksheet done. I'll have the answers available for you to check. And that's it. That's all you got to do. Just go through, get it done. Uh, don't overcomplicate it. Don't think, I mean, really, just keep it straightforward and simple. Uh, pay attention to the names of the endings because, like, if you know, if you do mess up the endings, like, let's say that you had changed sulfate to sulf, if you had changed it from sulfate, what if you had written sulfide instead? Well, if you change the ending of eight to ide, then all of a sudden you've changed it from SO4 to just S, to sulfur. So the names, the endings, they do matter, all right? So you never change the ending of a polytonic ion, all right? Other than that, I mean, you should be pretty good. So get, get to work, get that done, at the end.